Namibia boasts some of the world's most picturesque landscapes, hosting an array of wildlife and plant species. Its soil is rich in minerals, making it one of the largest exporters of non-fuel minerals on the continent. Coupled with its spectacular natural scenery is the diverse groups of people who call it home. The indigenous people of Namibia include the San, the Ovajimba, the Ovatwa, the Ovahimba, the Damara and the Nama. Each group speaks its own language and has histories, customs and traditions that set them apart from each other. The Himba tribe, for instance, is best known for their distinct hairstyles and bodies covered with orchidze, a scented paste traditionally made of okra, animal fat and aromatic resin. Its deep red color is not only a symbol of beauty amongst the tribe, but also a significant part of their ethnic identity and rich history as a people. Namibia's indigenous people make up just under 10% of the country's total population, but have lived here for thousands of years. Most of them live in two parts of the country. The San live in the Kalahari Desert, while the Damara, Ovachimba, Ovatwa, and Ovahimba live in the Kunene region in the north of the country. Many of the indigenous people live in an ecocentric lifestyle as their ancestors did, and have chosen to remain in small communities in isolated parts of the country. To tribes like the Himba, cattle is central to their lives and homes, which are round structures constructed of sapling posts bound together to form a domed roof, which is plastered in mud and dung. The indigenous people live from the land and rely on it to provide food and other resources. Traditionally, the men would go out to hunt, but as wildlife reserves and conservation efforts increase, they now rely more heavily on their own livestock for meat. Women are primarily responsible for gathering herbs and other edible foods, preparing meals, as well as carrying water to the villages. While many of the indigenous people have been captured on film thousands of times and their photos taken by tourists, travel photographers and bloggers for media content with billions of views, their lives are far from glamorous. As modernity creeps in and the challenges associated with it rear their ugly head, the plight of Namibia's indigenous people worsens. The constitution of Namibia has no specific clause that protects the rights of indigenous people. It recognizes the rights of marginalized communities with other clauses prohibiting discrimination on the grounds of race or ethnicity. Being recognized as a marginalized community brings many benefits. In mid-2021, the European Union, together with Namibia's Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication and Social Welfare, launched a cash-based transfer program in Onamatanga village in Omusati region, following a 1 million euro contribution from the European Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid Operations. Certain indigenous groups, like the Ovahimba, however, are yet to receive such recognition. Consequently, they are excluded from the benefits thereof and receive little help from the government. I was uh, helping them uh, the road leaves food program from the government side to, to distribute that food for the people, which is Himbas, but it's not enough. Even now, there's no uh, mobile clinic where they think. Just think far away from what we uh, even in Kangwati now. We are in Kangwati now. But they stay far from Kangwati, more than even 500 kilometers. Imagine, when some, someone is sick there, does not even get transport. Just dying there, in the morning, whatever they think. One of the places where they stay is no roads. Then to pick up for some, one, one, whatever the, 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 the food from the throat. That's not leaking there. People are suffering. Because they have only uh, took the Ovatua group, but we want also the main Himba tribe also to be degraded to get those kind of benefits that the other, other groups are, are receiving. They are, they are receiving, uh, on the monthly basis, they are receiving uh, the, the, the food and also Whenever there is a, a study opportunities for the kids, that letters that comes from the councillor's offices, that marginalized letters, is also an added advantage for those previously disadvantaged group. There is constant pressure from 
powerful external forces who encroach on and use indigenous people's resources without their permission. Another form of encroachment driven by politically well-connected locals is taking place. The occupiers of all the exclusive farms are typically wealthy people with significant local status. Many are civil servants, political figures or self-made businessmen who derive most of their income from non-farming activities. They seldom live on their farms and few have received any training in agriculture. These are new farms owned by a new generation of entrepreneurs pursuing business enterprises new to communal land. Where I came from, there is a really serious challenges with uh, those companies, the, the, the grazing land, and all these kind of things, the stakeholders which are involved. Mining is also a problem. Namibia is a mineral-rich country, and the government has rights over all the mineral resources in the country's soil. The government often issues permits to mining companies without consulting indigenous communities. In some cases, notably the recent prospecting license that were issued to Recon Africa, only a hasty consultation was done with a limited group of people. Uh, you know, EPL, permission for mining companies to mine, those EPLs are issued by rich people. They are they, they issued on the communal land, on the land of indigenous people. And those people, they don't even take care of these people. So those kind of things is, 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 is a challenge. And that, when that mine is, is operational, that investor is only taking care of the EPL owner, and he don't even care of the community people. So the community is, 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 is inside the mine, but the community is not benefiting from mine. In Okongava, situated about 10 kilometers outside Karibib, it is reported that Canadian-owned mining company Desert Lion Energy acquired an EPL or exclusive prospecting license, allowing them to move forward with explorations while awaiting a mining license. These mineral exploration and prospecting endeavors done without the consultation of locals have had devastating effects on small-scale subsistence farmers in the surrounding communities. Farmers in Okongava have expressed concern about the impact of the undertakings on their health and that of their livestock. The construction of roads in the mining area has compromised their grazing land and destroyed structures such as fencing, gates and cattle pens, all of which have not been replaced as promised by the company. In Okombahe, residents have lost livestock as a result of companies failing to rehabilitate the areas on which they have carried out explorations. Heritage sites such as the Ganeb and the Kawab Mountains, which are significant and hold sacred values for the indigenous people, are at risk as exploration at these sites is underway. It is alleged that wealthy Namibians are releasing their cattle onto grazing land in indigenous areas. Grazing cattle destroy trees, plants and even farmland belonging to indigenous communities. In the Omosati region, it has been reported that politically connected individuals have fenced off large parts of communal land. Yet again, indigenous people bear the brunt of this. Their grazing land has diminished in size and quality, resulting in weaker livestock and incurring additional costs of buying fodder to supplement livestock diets. Uh, the Himba is just uh, losing the domestic animal like most of the cattle different uh, ways. Some of them are strained by, by the people just coming from over other regions. Uh, some of them are lost the animal uh, during the drought uh, infect. Uh, uh, because they, 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 don't, they are not having enough grazing land for them. This can be a serious problem because climate change has already made it difficult for the indigenous people to access water and food. In 2013, 2016 and 2019, the Namibian government declared national emergencies due to extreme drought events that had a devastating effect on the agriculture industry. By the end of 2019, which was the worst drought recorded in 90 years, communities across the region lost approximately 100,000 livestock. Yeah, the Himba, they, they, they lost the annual uh, impact. Uh, to mention a few, uh, 
the throat throat is in back for the, the him back the, uh, because it is become few the class is just finished up because there is no enough because of the, that not even receiving enough rain for them which mean the, the end of the, the, the cattle dying one by one day by day because there is no enough for even water but when the rain does not come that all that thing just end up just finish up because there's no more anything, there's no more water. Imagine the cattle, it's a big animal. It's not like a goat, like sheep. It's dying very, very shortly time, which means you can get enough glass and enough water per day. This is no water, this is no longer. It means it can die very soon. Goat farming has been shown to be easier in Namibia's northern regions because goats are able to better cope with drought. Unfortunately, farmers do not value them much, even though they are important to communities. Cattle to the indigenous people of Namibia is a form of wealth and forms an integral part of their survival and culture. Without it, their way of life is impacted. When there is no drought, the Himba are very proud and happy. They were very wealthy. We were having a lot of male, a lot of meat, a lot of uh, t -t -t cattle around the homes. They can get the money from the cattle, which is no, no money, no cattle. Which means no cattle, no money. Can I say that? No cattle, no blankets. No cattle, no houses. Which means hunger, disease, because it's no cattle. People even now, they're not even married to each other. Why? Because there's not enough food for them. How can I marry a woman? I fit, with, I, fit, I fit her with what? Nothing. People are now facing very big problems in Himbas, mostly Himbas. The cattle to <laughs> the Himba is, 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 is like a diamond. They feel that they cannot uh, live without. So they get many things out of it. They get fat, they get meat, they can, they can sell it. So for them, cattle, it's, it's playing a, a major role. So to have a cattle, it's something that boosts even their livelihood and standard of living. Since this uh, drought has almost taken away most of their cattle. They are sitting with stress. They are looking for how they can replenish, replace or recover those cattle. But unfortunately, they don't have means to recover those cattle. So uh, that dilemma is still with them. It's, it will take a while to, to, to fade away from them because Cattle for them, it's, it's, it's something, it's everything. The fight over resources has been exacerbated in recent times because of climate change, mining corporations, and small pockets of wealthy, well-connected individuals who use their power to their advantage. Is it acceptable for modernity to erase people's ecocentric way of life? Taking this into consideration, will the plight of Namibia's indigenous people ever end?